Right, welcome to the Darkwing rigging project. This is part one. The first thing you'll notice, well you should have downloaded this model from the introduction video. I'll put a link in the description so if you don't have this model it's freely available. Uh, I made this model specifically for this tutorial. Watch the intro video and there's a link in the intro video on where to get the model. You can download it for free. Alright, the first thing you'll notice is that you don't have this little guy. I'm going to delete him first. That's the scale guy I use to make sure all the mechs are about the same size. But uh, he's not included in the model because he's not something I modeled, so he's not something I'm going to distribute. Alright, let's take a look at the model. You'll notice if you look by selecting any object, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see I've already named these objects. This is foot R, foot dot L, foot joint dot R, foot joint dot L, so on and so forth. These are the legs. This object here is actually named ankle, ankle dot L, and then ankle dot R. These are the knee joints. I'm considering knee joints anyway. Uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so they should have logical names. I'm going to recommend that you name the bones as close as possible to these names. I normally do that just to keep things sorted out, but um, anyway, that's just part of my workflow. So, let's look at the model here, and you can see that um, this tutorial is meant to show not what I would consider an advanced rig, because it's not really advanced. It's, it's going to be a pretty simple, straightforward rig, but maybe a better word would be complex rig, because uh, you're going to have bones. Well, if we look here, you can see that we're probably going to have a bone in here somewhere, a joint here, another bone, a joint, another bone, a joint, another bone for the knee, another joint, another bone just for the leg then there'll be a bone over here that'll control the what I'm calling the ankle and then there'll be a bone here for the heel joint a bone for the heel there'll be a bone here to control this joint the foot joint and then there'll be a bone for the foot okay so that's the idea anyway and uh, here you can see in the torso there's some crazy stuff going on as well. Um, let me show you where was that drawing from? The heck? Oh, there we go. Get rid of my grease pencil. Let me show you what I was thinking when I uh, built this. Um, if you look, especially from the side view, we'll go into wireframe. Let me turn my screencast keys on. You'll see here that uh, I have the hips here which have a sort of basin looking object or part to it and then in that basin there's what's called the waist okay now my intention is and I'll demonstrate this using the cursor as a pivot point which is how I usually test my pivot points um, that'll be clear in a second see I can select this looks like the cursor is already set to the pivot point or the pivot point is already set to use a 3D cursor, I should say. Now, uh, if I select these faces, which will pretty much even out here, and I move my cursor to my selected area, you'll see that now if I rotate this part or this object or this mesh, you can see that it rotates around the cursor as a pivot point. Okay, that's what I use to test. Uh, I should also mention that when you move the cursor in local view and go back to global view it's still where it was in global view in this case we had it set to the uh, center of the screen here so it's still there and then when you go back into local view it kind of resets it so just keep that in mind when you're switching back and forth between local view because like I just did here I selected these faces with the intention of using them as a reference point for pivoting but when I go back to global view I'm still gonna have to set my cursor there the selection will still be made, but I have to move my cursor there in global view. Okay, so now that we have that cursor there, and the pivot point is set to revolve around the cursor, if I rotate this along the z-axis, you can see that it moves. If I select all these other objects in the scene that are going to be attached to that object, in, in our case this piece named torso twist, 
then I rotate along the z-axis, you can see it kind of simulates what I want the bones to do. And I, that's just part of my workflow. I just like to see, I like to check and see, like, for example, if this mech was going to have the ability to rotate its upper torso 360 degrees, I can see here, just by doing this, that none of the parts, while it's standing still, are going to collide. The torso is not hitting the hips, it's not hitting the legs, the arms aren't bumping into the upper legs, stuff like that. So now let's select this piece that's called the waist, and that's the part that's kind of sitting inside this basin area of the torso. If I go into local view for that, and I'm thinking I'm going to want it to pivot way down here, I can select that, go into global view, you can't see it because I'm in solid mode, but if I switch to wireframe, you can see that my selection is still active. And I hit Shift S, move the cursor to select it. Now the cursor is our pivot point. Okay. If I select all these other pieces that are intended to be part of the upper torso, arms, the guns, the torso, and that torso twist object. Now I'm going to hit R twice to enable the... Uh, trackball kind of rotation and you can see this is what I intended the waist to do and to be perfectly honest I, I, I didn't intend for it to move the upper body I had intended for it to be a pivot point for the lower body and let me grab these leg pieces real quick and I'll show you what I mean so to give it a more organic kind of feel the waist should be able to revolve around that pivot point something like this okay so we'll see as we get further into the rigging how that's meant to work but that using the cursor as a pivot point that helps you to kind of define you know how everything's gonna spin and turn and oh it looks like I have mesh issues here let's see it looks like those faces are not following the correct normals control N will realign the normals to the outside yeah, that's better. This piece is probably the same. So I tab A to select everything, control N, and it realigns the normals to the outside. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is save this. I'm going to call it Darkwing Part 01. Not blend. Okay. Let's start rigging. Let me go into front view. So looking at the hips, where the cursor is now at that basin bottom, it's actually a pretty good spot. Look at it from the side view. Yeah, that is actually a pretty good spot. So let's go back into the front view. And shift A, we're going to create an armature. Single bone. And it looks like nothing happened. But actually, the armature was created. We just can't see it. Because we're in solid mode, um, it's hidden behind all the uh, objects that are in front of it. So since I planted it pretty much smack dab in the middle of the hips and the uh, torso twist and the waist objects, you couldn't see it. In wireframe mode, we can see it. So to resolve that, with our armature selected, we can go into the object panel, I believe it is. Yeah, object panel. And we can click this button here that says X-Ray. Once we click that button, then our object becomes an X-Ray object. It's as if you were looking through an X-Ray and that's the only thing you can see. So it doesn't matter if we're in wireframe mode, which normally you can see it anyway, or solid mode or even textured mode. X-Ray means that whatever object is set to X-Ray is still viewable and selectable. See? Okay. Let's switch back to solid view. Um, you know, now that I went into this view, the uh, I have the GLSL shading on, so I can kind of see the effect of the light on the model, the shadows and the shading. But uh, normally, I like to keep all this stuff separate. What I mean by this stuff are the lights, camera, the ground plane, to me, I treat it like a movie set, so I like to keep my movie set on this other layer here. This empty actually controls the camera rotation, so I'm going to move that as well. 
Okay. So we can reference the grid as the floor. Not a problem. Let's get back to the armature. All right. This is doing some house cleaning. Okay, here's the armature. We created a single bone. Um, hmm. It's actually a good bone to use for the uh, the waste object. So I'm going to show you how sometimes, whenever I can, I like to precisely place these bones. So if I select this face on the waste object and move my cursor there and then I go back and select my armature you can switch the different uh, modes for the bones here in object mode it treats the entire armature and all the bones as one object in edit mode you can edit each bone individually um, and in pose mode that's the uh, mode we use to pose the rig or pose all the bones so I'm going to switch into edit mode select this part this joint um, selection to cursor and that puts it at the very top of this I'm gonna start building upwards so let's take a look let's extrude this straight up now see you can see that this part here and I think our pivot point yeah it's still set to the cursor so the cursor is right here this part here with all of these pieces attached to it is intended to rotate like this to give the mech the ability to pivot its torso up and down okay again I can test it against the cursor and I could actually see if I like the way it looks before I even rig it so I can rotate this forward I like that maybe when I hit this part you see these pieces are gonna start colliding with each other and when I say colliding, I mean the meshes are going to start intersecting. I don't mean they're actually going to collide because we don't have collisions enabled. And it's not a physics thing. So I'm, I'm simply referring to the fact that they're going to start hitting each other and intersecting geometries. I mean, you can pull it as far as you want. But when you're animating it, that's not going to look right. See? All right. But anyway, control Z to undo that. just thought I'd show you that. So let's go back into side view and take a look. Oh, where do we want this bone? Really, we want it about here, or maybe even in the middle of this object. So what I'll do is I'll grab it along the z-axis, bring it towards the top of the object, then I'll select the bone itself, hit W, and subdivide it. So now this bone here is going to control the torso twist object, and this bone here is going to control the torso. So when we uh, rotate, ugh, still set to the 3D cursor, I'll set it to median point. So when we rotate this bone, it'll rotate the torso. When we rotate this bone, it'll rotate the uh, torso twist. But all that will be done in pose mode. We'll show you that later. So let's keep on going. All right. Now it would seem that we need a bone from about here to here and one from about here to here and then a bone from here to here and then a bone probably from here to here with pivot points here, 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 and here. And then same thing for this side. But that's not necessarily true. And I'll show you how in a second. Really, I need a bone from about here to here, and then a bone from here to here, so that I can control the arms. Okay, because I'm this this part of the this part of the arm is going to twist. This is actually called the wing upper dot r. And again, if I select this face, Shift S cursor to select it. And then I rotate around the pivot point being the 3D cursor. Pivot point defined to the 3D cursor. I grab this and grab this, and I can kind of emulate how this arm is going to move. Okay? Something like that. 
So I need a bone there. I don't necessarily need a bone between the torso bone and the arm bone, which reminds me we should be naming these bones to match their logical usage. This is okay. If you look in this panel here where it says item, I have the armature selected, but I'm in edit mode, so it's showing me the name of this bone is bone. Which really this should be hips. The next bone going to be waist and the next bone will be torso okay let's extrude this bone now we need to start using this x-axis mirror so that when we extrude the bones I believe it works from the center out let's see no because of the names I was hoping it would just mirror it let's call this wing upper dot L and call this wing upper dot R that's supposed to be a dot upper dot R okay now with X axis mirror on Whatever I do with wing upper L should affect wing upper R in a mirrored fashion. So if I grab this and move it around, you see, since I'm pulling this joint, that the joint on the right side emulates it. Okay? But really, we're going to... This bone, because I extruded it from the torso bone, is attached to the torso bone. So if I grab this bone and move it around, it moves the torso bone. If I grab the torso bone and move it around, it moves the... Uh, wing bones. So what I want to do is hit Alt P, clear the parent, then I can grab this bone, put it wherever I like. Again, you're going to see it's going to mirror exactly what I do on one side to the other side. So if I grab it and move it here, now we have to kind of figure out where we want the bones to be. Again, we're looking for a logical progression of joints here. So, I mean, really, I can probably use this surface and the cursor there right to the center of that surface because I know that's a, a perfect circle a perfect circle there and then I can take this bone take the root of it and selection to cursor shift s and selection to cursor then really this here this Part of the gun is meant to be the pivot point so it's supposed to work something like this if I put the cursor here and pivot point is still set to the cursor and I rotate I'm going to constrain it to the y-axis by hitting the Y key oh let me get out of edit mode rotate Y this is how I meant for the gun to kind of move and that might change some of the modeling is going to change you'll see as we go along but so, here's the problem. If I offset the bone that much, when I go to twist this, it'll twist awkward. So really, it should be somewhere in here, not here. We don't want it there. We want it here. But, I can start by going to the gun object I hit tab that surface is still selected so I can move my cursor there then I can tab out of that select the bone tab into edit mode grab this joint shift s selection to cursor let's go into top view let me turn my gizmo back on and I kinda want it here Okay, and that's uh, pretty much directly from here. Uh, how do I do this? Thought it was Shift D. Maybe it's Control D. Oh, Control. <clears throat> Excuse me, Control D. All right, pretty much from here to here. 
Okay. So this bone got twisted. I'm going to hit Control N and recalculate the roll along the global Z axis. That straightens that out for us. And I think that's going to work pretty well. So I need another bone. From here I'm going to extrude it and constrain the extrusion to the Z axis. Take a look. Kind of want to line it up with the barrel of the gun. See if that works. Should, it should be fine. Okay. And it, since I have X-axis mirror activated in the armature options, it's also emulating what I do on one side across the X-axis, which is, of course, centered here. It's emulating it over there. So we only have to work on one side. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't work when I extruded it initially, but uh, probably because it has something to do with the naming. See if I can look into that. So now we need to rig the legs. Okay. I'm going to start by extruding a bone from the hips out towards this socket here. Okay. And then, in fact, it's going to need another bone towards this way. And then I'll show you how we're going to deal with this staggering. Because it looks like right now, you would put a bone from here to here. And then you would put a bone probably from here to around here. Then you'd put a bone from here to over here. Then you'd probably put a bone this way. Then you'd probably put another bone this way you're going to see this just isn't true. You don't need another bone here, and another bone here, and another bone here, and another bone here, another bone finally for the foot, another bone for the ankle. Uh, you'll see. That's not exactly how it works out. I'll show you a better way. So this is okay for now. I really don't need this bone, but I need this bone to be emulated across the other side. So let's go back a step. Let me delete this. I'm going to call this, for now, I'm going to call it uh, hip x dot l. Then I'm going to extrude another bone from here. Make sure I'm extruding it from hips. You can check down here in the lower left corner. Extrude, and then this will be hips x dot r. So hips x dot r. Now if I want to set this joint to the same place that this joint is with my x axis mirror, all I have to do is hit G, start to move it. Oh, it didn't work. Did I not name them the same? See what I did? I named this hip x dot l and named this hips x dot r. I need to change one of them. I'll just remove the s and it'll be hip x dot r. That's why the naming is important. So, as I was saying, if I want this to match this side, if I want this side of the bone joint to match this side of the bone joint, if I hit G, you'll see it moved it because I'm in grab mode. But if I simply right click to cancel that operation, now they match. So when I extrude from here, I don't have to worry about it matching. Okay? So, let's get rid of these bones. And then, we're going to parent this bone. And uh, we'll do that later. Right now, they shouldn't be parented because I deleted their parent, which they're not. All right, we'll go over that later. Put a pin in that. Okay, this bone, we definitely want to come forward. Now, we'll name this bone to match this hip joint. So, this will be hip joint. L. Maybe when it, we'll let we'll let Blender do the other naming later. This should be named Gun L, and this should be Gun R. But this we can leave hipjoint.l. This can be 
hip joint dot L. You can actually name this hip joint zero one dot L. That's all right. Because basically this whole assembly here is the hip joint, but it has two bones now, so that's all right. Doesn't matter. We'll make sense out of it. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. You can see that I modeled the hip joint with a face in here. Excuse me, I had to cough, but I turned the microphone off. So uh, I modeled this with the hip joint. I mean this hip joint with a face in here. I did that on purpose. I wanted to use that as a reference. So what I can do is set the pivot point to be the medium point of the selected and then turn on my gizmo. I had turned it off. Okay, let's see. It doesn't quite look like it in perspective mode, but this is actually a perfect circle as well. So I'm going to hit Control Alt Spacebar. And that sets my transform orientation along this face. And I can pull this out. Okay. And let's go to the top view. In fact, let's go into local view and isolate this so we can have a better, clearer view of it. If I tab into edit mode and switch to wireframe, you can see that I can now adjust this to pretty much the middle of these faces, which is where I want it. And then I switch back into global view. And if I hit shift S and cursor to select it, now I have my cursor pretty much along this joint, but in the center of this object. Okay. So that's where I want this pivot point to be. So now I can hit shift S and move selection to cursor. This pivot point, I want pretty much in the middle of this ball joint or the middle of this socket. So what I'm going to do is select this again. I'm going to hit control. I'm going to grab one of these faces on the sphere. Control L. You can see that it grabbed these faces as well that I don't want. So I'm going to deselect those. Go back into solid view. And I'm going to move my cursor to this selection. Oh, I moved my selection to the cursor. I'm going to move my cursor to the selection. That puts it pretty much in the middle of this ball. Okay. This missing faces here is not going to have very much impact on that. So the approximate center is good enough. Now I'm going to select this bone, select this joint, and I'm going to hit Shift S and move my selection to the cursor. So that should be pretty much lined up with this joint. Okay, the only part left to line up is this part. All right, now looking at this, I want that to be towards the bottom. And really, I want it to be somewhere in here. This is where I want the joints to line up. Okay, because this is going to be a pivot point and this will be a pivot point. And that's just an approximation, right? So what's the best way to do that? Well, to get this pivot point in the middle of this, we can line it up visually. In fact, let's take a look at that. Let's go into top view. And again, in wireframe view, we can select this and you can see that the joint should be somewhere around here. And you can see the middle here. So we could actually take this bone, take this joint, grab it, kind of move it. There's nothing wrong with that. We can move it around in 3D space, zoom in, look at it from this angle, grab it, move it a little towards this way. This is where our pivot point is going to be approximately. Look at it from this angle, uh, move it that way a little. Look at it from this angle, move it that way. And we could do that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We can get close enough that it will be usable and it'll look good. Uh, personally, I like to have a little bit more precise control. So looking at this object, you can see that there are five faces here. That means this face is in the middle of all of this. If I set my cursor there, and then I tab out, tab on my bone, Shift S, selection the cursor. I know it's in the middle now. 
at the very bottom of that object. And this, if I switch this to normals, yeah, that's kind of what I want. So I want to go along the normal of this bone, basically that Y axis there. Let's see if I recalculate the roll. Does that change this? No. So I'm going to make a new transform orientation based on this. Okay, now this is called bone. I created a new transform orientation. And now I can pull this up along that normal. Kind of where I want it. Let's switch out of, out of local mode. And let's take a look. I guess a little higher. What I'm looking at is I want it to be pretty much, looks like there's a hidden joint in here. Like basically about here. That goes across. Okay. So let's move it up a little more. Good. So then my pivot points are accurate. Okay. So now I can actually extrude this. And it looks like I can go along the x-axis that I created you see and it brings the bone out at pretty much the angle I want it and we're actually not going to need this bone but let's recalculate the roll switch back to global then recalculate the roll alright that's fine looks good so now we're going to have to have a bone coming down this way, and then a bone coming down this way, and a bone coming this way. Let's work on those. See, I can always use Control-Alt-Space to create these transform orientations. And I do that a lot in my workflow. I'm always creating transform orientations. I, I just find it easiest to do. And then I can adjust these along that axis, that created axis. So let's take a look. See where we want this thing. I'm going to select, let me tab out of there. I'm going to keep the armature selected, select this hip joint, select this leg joint. Let's select these joints or these leg objects. And then go into local view, or I like to call it isolation view because it isolates the objects, but it's actually named local view. Because it localizes, I guess. Localizes your selection. Let's take a look at where we want this bone to be. Pretty much down the middle. And since there's a seam down the middle. Alright, let's take a look. So I'm going to go into wireframe. I'm going to grab this bone. You can see that my transform orientation is still set to that bone. So I'm going to bring this about to the middle. Then I'm going to extrude it. I wonder if that's a good... Yeah, it looks like it's still staying along the same axis. I'm not going to match from the side view. But actually, taking a look at this, you can see that I built the model with this object that has a bar going right through. I put a bar right through the uh, knee. And I intended to use that to align my bone joint. So let's do that. This is just kind of the way I work. So you get a little peek into it. What I wanted to do was, what I was thinking was if I took this face and this face and set the cursor there, that then when I grab this joint, I could just align it to there. Ah, oh, damn it. Get cursor to select it instead of selection of cursor. Selection of cursor. No. <sighs> okay. Shift S. Cursor to select it. Then select my bone. Like that hip joint or that joint. Shift S. Then I want to move my selection to that cursor. Okay, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we're going to see. I'm going to hit Control N to recalculate that bone roll. I can already see it's not going to work. Look, 
It doesn't line up with the middle here. It's going to give us some funky transforms. See, because basically we want it to line up with F this as far as that orientation goes. So I guess we can grab this and move it over. That should work. Okay, now this bone we don't need anymore. That was just a placeholder. Since these two objects are pretty much parallel to each other, the rotation point is going to match. So we don't actually need that bone. And in fact, if we kept that, bo kept that bone there and then started using an IK setup, it would kind of mess up what we were doing. Because it would try to track across that bone and you would see you'd get some funky results. Conversely, <clears throat> I don't really need to I don't need to grab a bone or extrude a bone here. Nor do I want to. Since these are parallel, I can actually probably leave my bone there and bring it straight down to where I want the next pivot point to be which is pretty much right here hmm. right there Yeah, that looks good. Again, this should line up pretty much with the middle of that crease that's in the center of that object. Okay. Let's set a transform orientation and see what we get. Okay, see this blue arrow? This newly created Z axis. That's how I want this to extrude. So I'm going to extrude it. Hit Z and then Z again. And then I'm going to bring it pretty much down to this. Where this ball joint is. So let's get out of local, local view mode. And start aligning, it, aligning the joints to this ball joint. I'm going to select this sphere. This is a good clean selection. Move my cursor there. Then grab this bone. Shift S, move my selection to that cursor. Then I'm going to go back and select this sphere, which selected some extra geometry. I don't need any of oh why that. I need that too. I don't need this. And I don't need any of uh I don't need any of this. Oh, geez. Getting late. My fingers are getting confused from my brain. I don't need any of this. And I don't need any of this, and I don't need any of this. So I'm going to center my cursor there, cursor to select it. Then I'm going to select my bones, extrude one more time. Um, I'll take this joint, shift S, selection to cursor, check my bone rolls, control N, roll along the global Z axis, recalculate the roll. All right, take a look at the foot. Where is the middle of this foot? Well, pretty much here. Let's use this face. Shift S, cursor to select it. Let's select these bones. Extrude one more. Shift S, selection to cursor. 
grab the bone, control N, recalculate along the global Z axis. And that's pretty much how I wanted the bone. None of this mirrored. Hmm. All right. Well, let's set our cursor right to the middle of the whole scene. Shift C resets the uh, scene. And we're going to duplicate these bones. Right click to cancel the movement. We're going to set our pivot point to the cursor, which is now in the middle of the scene. Set our transform orientation to global. And we still have these duplicated bones selected, so we're going to scale along the x axis, negative 1. That flips them, gives us a mirrored one. Then we're going to hit Control N to recalculate the rolls. And that solves that. This is parented, looks like, to this bone, so let's clear that. Alt P, clear to parent. And this also, since I duplicated it from this side, is also connected to this bone. So let's Alt P to clear that parent. All right. Now the bones are all opposite of each other. The nice thing about doing it this way is that we can quickly rename them, if I remember correctly. Let's see. This is hip joint zero one, joint zero one, seven, eight, L, L, L. I think I messed up the naming. This should be thigh dot L. This should be knee dot L. This should be leg dot L. This should be foot joint dot L. And this should be foot dot L. I don't think it's going to keep the names. So this should be thigh dot r. This should be knee dot r. This will be leg dot r. And this will be foot joint. Dot R. And this will be foot dot R. Okay. Should be on track again. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this would be a good place to save. Now we're going to set up bones along the ankle and the heel. So my intention here was have this object kind of rotate, uh, let's see, let me move my cursor here. My intention was that this object is kind of going to rotate like this, something like that, more like this, as the foot moves. In fact, I left a little bit of space, you can see here, where I was intending to rotate it. Okay, so that's where we want the bone, pretty much. So, let's set this as a transform orientation. Select our bones. I'm going to just make a copy of one of these. I'll just grab this one. Hit Alt P to unparent it, clear the parent, grab this joint, Shift S, selection the cursor. Then I'm going to grab this joint. And see, what I did was I selected this face sort of as the angle I wanted. Yeah, that's fine. And I set the transform orientation along that angle. So now I can take this bone. Take this bottom joint, Shift S, selection the cursor, then I can grab it and move it along this way. And that kind of aligns it where I want it. 
Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Recalculate the roll. Better. And then we're going to need to add a bone here for this joint. I'm going to use this sphere. I'm going to deselect these faces that I don't need. And also deselect this ring of faces. Shift S. Cursor to select it. And I can take this bone. Shift D to duplicate it. It doesn't have a parent, which is kind of nice. I can take this joint, Shift S, selection the cursor. Go back here. I, I want the other joint to be pretty much in the middle of this area. So that means if I take this face and this face, move my cursor to that area, that's pretty much the middle. Get out of local view. Then I can. Grab this joint, shift S, selection the cursor. Oh, <laughs> I didn't move my cursor. So select this object again. Those two faces are still selected. Cursor to selected, tab out of there. Grab this bone, tab. That's still selected, that joint. So let's go selection the cursor. Click on this bone, recalculate the bone roll. Global Z axis. You can see all my uh, my bones are now, since they were named correctly, now that they're emulating one side to the other and using the X mirror. So we need one more bone for this heel. Uh, really, it's going to kind of pivot here and swing this way and swing this way. So. can actually bring this straight down. Select my bones. Select this joint. Switch back to global orientation for my transform orientation. Extrude Z straight down. Go to side view. Make sure this one I know is snapped to the bottom. So I'll just grab this one and snap it to that one. And that's our, uh, our armature setup. Now we're going to rig it. So that's it for now. 48 minutes. All right. 50 minute video isn't bad. I made some mistakes along the way, but hey, the tutorial. We all make mistakes. Just keep going. That's how we learn. Um, something I want to point out is that this bone is the exception. And we could have easily have gone from this bone this way and then create this bone this way then go back over here and then create this bone finally but then I would have had to uh, delete these two bones and then when I do the IK I might have difficulty so I prefer this method when I have one offset part in the legs because I've built mechs like this before so have some experience in it and it was very difficult to get it to interpolate the uh, IK rig but this way going straight up and down like this because this part this knee is parallel to this joint and this joint it doesn't affect it as far as the uh, animation or the poses and you'll see that later but for now this is the rig and uh, next part, we will get into actually rigging the bones and parenting the objects to the existing bones. Then as we test them out, we can uh, make minor adjustments to see um, how we want everything to move and to make sure that every movement we have is accurate. All right. See you next time. Thanks for watching.